to this recording on the, in the series of recordings on the IAASB's Quality Management Exposure Drafts. This recording addresses the monitoring and remediation component in the system of quality management and the requirements for documentation. Why is there a need for change? Findings from the IAASB's post-implementation project outreach from stakeholders and the comments received in the invitation to comment highlighted that there are some aspects in ISQC1 which could be more robust and the firm's monitoring process was identified as one of these aspects. Findings indicated an imbalance between monitoring of the firm's entire system of quality management and monitoring of inspections of completed engagements. Extant ISQC1's monitoring requirements is largely focused on, on inspection of engagements. As a result, most firms mostly only perform inspections of engagements and neglect monitoring of the entire system of quality control. Regulators raise concerns that firms place undue reliance on ineffective monitoring processes and they follow a checklist approach to monitoring rather than considering the quality of the work or the judgments made. This is reflected in the external inspection results which continue to identify deficiencies that were not identified through a firm's internal monitoring processes. Extant ISQC1 also has no requirement for leadership to investigate the causal factors of a deficiency, nor to consider the information from external inspection findings. The ITC therefore highlighted the need for a greater focus on internal and external monitoring and remediation activities. This was identified as one of the key public interest issues. To address these issues, the EDISQM1 has new and various enhanced requirements for monitoring and remediation. The monitoring and remediation component in the new standard is adapted from the monitoring component in extant ISQC1 and the house diagram shows that monitoring and remediation extend to all the components in the firm's system of quality management. It is a process to evaluate the design, implementation and operation of the firm's entire system of quality management and includes timely and effective remediation to promote ongoing improvement of the system. The following slides will take us through the process as proposed in ED ISQM1. The first step in the monitoring and remediation process is designing and performing monitoring activities. The purpose of a monitoring activity is to monitor the responses in the firm's system of quality management and the standard makes it clear that monitoring activities should cover all aspects of the firm's system of quality management and not only inspection of engagements. To achieve scalability, the requirements emphasise that a firm has to tailor the nature, timing and extent of the monitoring activities to the circumstances of the firm. This means that monitoring activities will vary from firm to firm. That will depend on the size, structure and organisation of the firm, its involvement with the network and the resources that leadership intends to use for the monitoring activities. To promote the design of more proactive and effective monitoring activities, the new requirements emphasise factors that leadership has to consider when designing their monitoring activities. It is instead of prescribing a checklist of monitoring activities that have to be performed. The IASB is hopeful that this will encourage firms to develop innovative monitoring techniques unique to the firm's own circumstances, which will then further enhance quality management. In accordance with extant ISQC1, the new standard requires that the firm's monitoring activities include the inspection of engagements to determine whether the responses that are required to be implemented at the engagement level have been implemented. To keep the requirements scalable and to address the concerns of SMPs regarding resource constraints, there is some flexibility allowed in the standard over the inspection of engagements. Firms now have an option to perform inspection of completed engagements or of in-process engagements. It is noted in the application material that in some instances an in-process engagement is a monitoring activity, where in other instances it may address a quality risk in the firm's, um, in the firm's engagement performance component. 
To retain the robustness of ISQC1, the standard still requires the inspection of at least one completed engagement per engagement partner on a cyclical basis. In contrast with extant ISQC1, leadership determines the length of the cycle and the application material provides various factors that leadership has to consider when determining the length of the cycle. ED, EDM, ED, ISQM1 also include enhanced requirements for those eligible to perform the monitoring activities. While extant ISQC1 requires that the responsibility for monitoring be assigned to individual with sufficient and appropriate authority and experience, the new requirements address the competence, time, capabilities and objectivity of the person responsible for performing monitoring activities. The second step in the monitoring and remediation process is evaluating findings and identifying deficiencies. The requirements acknowledge that there is a wide variety of information sources that leadership has to take into account when they evaluate findings. This includes the results from their own internal monitoring inspections, the results from external inspections, as well as, as, well as any other information received from other sources about the operation of the firm's system of quality management. Findings may be positive or negative in nature. Positive findings highlight opportunities for the firm to enhance its system of quality management and although the application material encourages firms to consider the results from positive findings in order to identify good practices, the standard has no explicit requirement for any further actions in terms of positive findings. The severity and pervasiveness of negative findings will vary and the requirements have been clarified to differentiate between a negative finding and a deficiency. To assist firms to distinguish between a negative finding and a deficiency, the standard includes a definition for deficiency. It explains that a deficiency in a firm's system of quality management exists when a quality objective required to achieve the objective of the standard is not established, when a quality risk has not been appropriately identified or assessed, such that a response that addresses the risk has not appropriately been implemented or designed, or when a response to address the quality risk is not properly designed, implemented or operating. The third step in the monitoring and remediation process is evaluating identified deficiencies. Negative findings that do not rise to the level of a deficiency do not require any further actions. Identified deficiencies do however require further actions and the standard has now a requirement for leadership to investigate the root causes of an identified deficiency so that remedial action can be taken. The objective of a root cause analysis is to understand the underlying circumstances that caused the deficiency. Understanding the underlying cause of a deficiency has various benefits for a firm. It promotes the design and implementation of more effective remedial action, enable proactive monitoring of remedial actions, and facilitates communication of more relevant information to personnel. The extent of the root cause analysis depends on the nature and severity of the deficiency. In some instances, the procedures to understand the root cause of a deficiency may be quite simple. For example, in circumstances where the possible severity of a deficiency is not significant, or in the case of a smaller firm, when those performing the root cause analysis have an understanding of the deficiency. In other cases, it may be more complex, for instance, in larger firms, where those involved with the root cause analysis do not necessarily have a working understanding of the deficiency. In line with the objective to enhance the monitoring of the system of quality management, the standard includes a requirement for leadership to evaluate the severity and pervasiveness of the identified deficiencies, including the effect thereof, individually and in aggregate, on the firm's system of quality management. The fourth step in the monitoring and remediation process is responding to identified deficiencies. The new standard is less prescriptive than extant ISQC1 in terms of the remedial actions and it requires of leadership to design and implement remedial actions that take into account the root cause of a deficiency, including the severity and pervasiveness thereof. 
It also has a new requirement for leadership to evaluate the effectiveness of remedial actions in addressing the root cause of a deficiency. The fifth step in the monitoring and remediation process is communication of matters related to the process with firm leadership and other personnel. Internal communication include a description of the monitoring activities, the deficiencies identified, including a description of the severity and pervasiveness thereof, and the remedial actions taken to address the deficiency. The standard also includes a new requirement for firm leadership to communicate with external parties matters about the firm's monitoring and remediation process. This can include the firm's network, service providers or any other external parties. To reinforce leadership's accountability and responsibility for quality, the standard has a new requirement for the individual assigned with ultimate responsibility and accountability for the system of quality management to evaluate whether the system provides reasonable assurance that the objective of the standard has been achieved. The evaluation should be undertaken at least annually and should take into account the severity and the nature of the deficiencies identified. In circumstances when it's determined that the system do not provide reasonable assurance, leadership has to take prompt and appropriate actions. A key aspect of the quality management approach is continuous improvement. As you will recall, the risk assessment process requires the firm to establish quality objectives, identify and assess risks to achieving the quality objectives, and then designing and implementing responses to mitigate the identified risks. The revisions to the monitoring and remediation component has an increased focus on ongoing or more real-time monitoring. EDISQM1 includes two instances that trigger a requirement for the firm to determine whether the firm's quality objectives, assessed quality risk and responses remain appropriate and if they should modify it. One such instance is in response to information arising from the firm's monitoring activities, which may have identified efficiencies that need to be addressed. EDISQM1 has a new requirement for documentation. It is a two-step process in which some of the requirements are principle-based, whereas others are more specific. The standard acknowledges that it's not necessary nor practical for a firm to document every consideration or judgment made in terms of its system of quality management. It therefore has principle-based requirements which requires of leadership to provide documentation which provide a consistent understanding of the system of quality management, support the consistent implementation operation of the responses, and that provide evidence of the effectiveness of the responses. It has more specific documentation requirements addressing the firm's quality objectives, assessed risks and responses, the firm's monitoring and remediation process, and in relation to networks and service providers. This concludes our recording for the monitoring and remediation component of the system of quality management and the documentation requirements. Please remember that these requirements will significantly change how we monitor and remediate quality within audit firms. It is therefore very important that firms start as soon as possible to implement these requirements. Thank you.